Wrestling hey, buddies want to be your buddies. Hey, buddy. Buddy. You got me mad now. Like a Padre Slamcast right here at Afterbus TV, Podcast One, iTunes, any way you're listening, we really appreciate you. If you're watching us on YouTube, hot damn, we are handsome. Hi. The, elim- <laughs> the Elimination Chamber is over. Don't worry, there's another pay per view in like 30 seconds. So uh, we're going to get right to everything. First up, at Wrestling Buds on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Buds. Uh, that's pretty much all our good stuff right there. Let's get to all the introductions. Oh, first off, before we get the intros, do us a favor. Podcast One loves hearing from you. Here's the deal. All you got to do, go to podcastone.com. There's going to be a big logo that says, take this survey. It'll take three to five minutes of your time, depending on how good of a reader you are. It took me 17 minutes. You just take this survey, make sure you click the box that says you listen to Wrestling and Padres, and it helps us a ton. So simple as that. Podcastone.com, click on the survey, tell them how much you love us, and that's all we got to say about that. Let's get to the intros. At Jay Quasto on the Twitter, that man over there sitting next to the empty chair that will be filled up relatively soon. Find him on Twitter at C. Rice 17. He's the pride of TCU and Houston, Texas. He's Chuck Rice. He's a man. Boom. What's happening? Dude, I, I'm still taking the survey in the middle of it. I must be really bad at this thing. <laughs> as long as you get it done and click on the box, that's all that matters. Man, good. things are good, Johnny. Yeah. Things are good. First, you mentioned TCU, so quick shout-out to them making it to the Super Regional on their way to the College World Series. Oh, for baseball? Yes, sir. I was trying to figure out what sport it was. Oh, baseball. Got it. Um, and, yeah, man, things are good. You know, uh, I can't tell you too much about it, but I have finally started on a project that Rob Van Dam and I have been working on putting together for two years. Whoa. Hi. And we finally, finally got some stuff rolling on it after a lot of preparation, a lot of hard work, a lot of legwork. So okay. I'm excited to tell you all more about that soon. Good. Where's he living now? Is he out here? He's still out here. We should get him in here and talk about it whenever yeah, you're allowed right. to. Get in, getting him to drive to Encino. Oh, Come on. That's true. <laughs> Maybe he can, we can call him and talk to him about it. Well, man, yeah, well, I'm sure we can work that out. All right, that'd be easy enough. We could do that. Put, put us on speaker. It'll be a great time. It'll be fun. All right, good deal. Well, uh, the man sitting next to me in studio, he is the leader of the Curtain Jerks podcast. He is the leader of the 18 Bits podcast, and he's just a leader of so many individuals in life. He is Scott Narver. Boss, man. Hello, sir. 16 Bits podcast. Oh, is it? I thought it was 8 Bits. He. Oh, I only listened to half of it. That's why. I'm sorry. That's 16 right. Bits podcast. 16 Bits podcast. Jo- Johnny, he kind of he kind of looks like that <laughs> Meanwhile, dude, Dale's too. already laughing at my stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks like that dude that runs with that Marky Extreme guy. Who? This guy? Yeah, he kind of oh, looks, looks like... like oh. He looks a little bit like Skeeter Skyfly. Oh, like Skeeter God. Skyfly. I wish that guy's what ripped. A... Yeah. <laughs> His body? ripped. Oh, my God. I've yet to see a man fill out a sleeveless. Girls swoon over that guy. That's why he doesn't have a Twitter, because just so much action from the ladies all the time. I'm on a roll, baby. That's very true. But don't worry. We have one more guest to tell you about. Actually, he's not a guest. He's he's one of the <laughs> leaders. Not leaders. He's one of the creators of the show. He is in Washington, D.C. Find him on Twitter at the Walking Dale. He's always vest for business. He is none other than Dale Rutledge. I got a puppy. I got a puppy? Bad news. Yo, buddy. What's going on, fellas? Not much. What's new in your life? Uh, you know, just been doing, uh, spin roonies and, uh, slapjacks all day to prepare for the episode. Yeah, that's right. We nice. have a hell of an episode. Booker T and Stevie Ray. We got Harlem Heat. Nigel McGinnis is going to come in studio any second. We don't know when. He's just going to show up. He's going to larry at us all, and we'll see if we survive through it, so. Now, now I got one question for you, Dale. Yo. Are you wearing a vest right now? Of course. Even in the house? on Dude, Johnny, Johnny, let's be real. Dale's probably wearing a vest and nothing else. Hell yeah. He's a true pro. <laughs> He's a true I actually had an interview via Skype the other day, and I put on a vest right before the interview just so I could make sure I was snazzed up. Well, yeah, man. you got to make sure it's a, you're in the right state of mind. you got to get that cash. 
I always love doing a Skype call because you always put up like weird shit that you don't normally sit near or try to make things look a little bit better just so you can <laughs> somehow seem cooler than you really are. Scotty, what do you put on your Skype when you ever have a fun interview or an important interview? Oh, I always put the feet up right next to the camera. <laughs> So they see that I'm laid back. That's right. <laughs> mm-hmm. And barefoot, too, by far. Oh, a sandal. So you flop it around and you spin it around on the toe. And that shows them that you mean business. And you smoke. You smoke heavily. You get like yeah. a big hey, fat stogie. I can stogie. get on board with that. A stogie. <laughs> a stogie. <laughs> Some stogie. Some business minded. Not a know? marijuana cigarette, you mean. Yeah. No, 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 no. no, no, nobody, no, no. nobody smokes those, Johnny. Oh, no, I don't know. Who does that? Does Scott even have a job? Is he a good person to take advice on this from? No, these are all lies. <laughs> All lies. These are all I, had, lies. I had a job and then it wrapped, so I'm I am now unemployed again. So if you're looking for hire for a gangly fella, uh, I call, for, I call, for a foot model, I call you're totally guy, available. I called this guy for his other job for some help. He was useless to me. That's right. Oh, That's right. I'm no good. Hey, but look, but look, Scott. I made it in. I made it in. What, what shirt it? does that mean? Yeah. It's a U2 shirt. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are they, oh, doing, nice. a, are they so doing a tour or something? You paid yeah. thousands of dollars for tickets and then a couple extra thousand thousands. dollars for a T-shirt. I didn't uh, pay t-shirt. thousands. I didn't pay thousands. <laughs> but it was awesome. <laughs> Speaking of that sound bite, it just got announced today. Finally, they've listened to me. The Primetime Players T-shirt is for sale. No Johnny, one else will be bu- Johnny will be buying one for all of the fans. I'm bu- <laughs> for all of the primetime player fans out there. So two shirts will be bought. One oh, size come for on. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, hey, boo. Hey, boo. Hey, boo. Hey, boo. Hey, boo. Hey, boo. <laughs> listen, listen. I'm so excited. It's a long time coming. I like Congrats the primetime players. Yeah. I'm oh, I thought buddies with Jerry Young. <laughs> You know, it's all good. I can't wait to get that. Primetime players had a great showing at the Elimination Chamber. I don't know if we're talking about wrestling at any point, but... Yeah, no, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome, awesome showing for the Primetime players. Let, that paper. Let's jump right into it. The Tag Team Elimination Chamber match, we knew it would be a bit of a kerfuffle because uh, there were 13 wrestlers in it, but I'll tell you what... 13 and a half. 13 and a half. Oh, God, I forgot about El Torito. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's, true. Is kerfuffle German or whether it's not exactly? I don't know. It's a word that I decided to use in the moment, and now it's a- part of history. Antarctic. Getting them. <laughs> yeah. Dale, you know we make words up in here. Say what? You know we make words up in here. Yeah, come on, Ruffians. That's I mean, that's, that's I totally, I totally just gave you the, you know, ghetto girl head bob, by the way, with that. Yeah. Hey. Hey, here's oh, another yeah. here's another made-up phrase. Primetime potters is what they were. That, there you go. Yeah. I like it. Hi-yo. Mm-hmm. Is that... I'm just going to move on. So, yeah, let's let's get right into it. The the Tag Team Elimination Chamber match, New Day retained. We loved it. Then they had a six-man on Raw. New Day still just crushing it. I'm so glad they retained against all those teams. I, I love everything New Day is doing right now, just from the fact that when you had one of the Lucha Dragons on top of their pod, they were holding them down. Awesome. The mm-hmm. fact that they made a big showing of all three of them getting to be in the match. You know, even, even their, you know, uh, for those of you that get to watch on Hulu Plus, you know, usually they have these little entrance videos before... Uh, like little cuts like hey you're watching the special 90 minute version on Hulu and it's usually really bad and terribly scripted and not funny yep. but Primetime's player one or sorry uh, New, New Day's one is hilarious tag team match they, they start a clap off. going they get everything good stuff from them so what about Kalisto hanging from the top of the chamber that... I I really loved that uh, moment but I have to wonder if, if there was something else that he was trying for and he just kind of had to go with, uh, you know, just kind of landing on everyone, because it seemed like he was having some trouble with his getting his feet the way he wanted them up there. But, it, I mean, it was still awesome. We haven't seen anybody do that before, but I wondered if he had something even bigger and bolder in mind. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many times you get to practice climbing the chamber. <laughs> True. Well, enough. if you were if you were at WrestleMania Access, you could have done it several times. Apparently. That's a good point. You should have done that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was Kalisto without his mask on. That's who it was. The guy hanging from the chamber. Right. Then they arrested him. He's like, no, no, no I'm Kalisto. He's like, yeah, everybody's Kalisto, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> and he pho- he photobombed you. Mm-hmm. Sure did. Well, his feet photobombed. Wait, 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 yeah. wait. What? What is this? What happened? We're just making shit up. No, there was an elimination Ish. chamber at uh, WWE Access for WrestleMania, and mm-hmm. we we're just. Pretending that and this, this guy coming. got a, this guy got arrested for jumping on the uh, the chamber and climbing up it and oh, then, right. like trying to jump yeah. on security or something. Now, yeah. now see, so so here's what I'm curious about. You know, if we back it up just a second too, sure. how did this pay per view even really come to be? Because I'm curious. You know, Dale, I remember you did the interview with Stephanie where she talked about, you know, we're not doing Elimination Chamber anymore because these new arenas and places don't give us the accessibility to be able to hang something like that. You know. 
And right. Then, well, well, uh, that is specific to the newer arena. So this one that must have been an older one, and I think oh, it was basically is. a house show that they turned into a uh, pay per view just for the network. So, so I don't know what you would call that. So imagine being the lucky so person. Crazy. The lucky person that buys, you know, like for those house shows, those like front row tickets that are like, you know, yeah, a right? fraction of the yeah. cost of what a pay per view one is. Do you think that they had to pay more? No, no, because no, because oh. this thing came out of nowhere, was announced out of out of like the dinner. It's like, oh, hey, like we're an having RKO. A, elimina- yeah, <laughs> we're having elimination chamber. RKO! And in all fairness, the fans at Corpus Christi really deserve this one after, you know, they've had, like, two shows canceled on them before for various reasons. And there's nothing new in Corpus Christi, so it probably is an old arena. That's why they got to do it. And I bet you Dale knew the whole time, I bet, because it was an audio interview that Stephanie was winking the whole time. Yeah, there's a reason that I wasn't allowed in the room, Mm -hmm. and Dale had to do a (laughs) one-on-one. She's like, no, I'm going to That's that's the reason. She's like, those other guys, those other yahoos in studio with, they're going to give it away. But, Dale, I'm going to tell you, the Elimination Chamber's coming back, but you keep it close. Close to the close to the old to the vest. vest. The vest. Oh, ho, ho, damn! That's a round of applause right there. So we got to talk about this. Moving on from the tag team division, um, primetime players get a new T-shirt. New Day still retaining. We all love that. But how about this? I beat Super Cena. Could we say that the promo between Kevin Owens and John Cena might be a candidate for in-ring segment of the year? Well. Well, the first thing I want to say is, Dale, how you feel about Kevin Owens' promos now? Well, yeah, I'm glad he got some uh, motivation going for him because it's definitely been uh, a much better Kevin Owens than what we saw with Michael Cole or any of the Lazy Day promos that he had on NXT. Agreed. He's really, man, not not just stepped it up, but he's... He's taking control to where when Owens got done talking, I was like, man, I don't know how Cena is going to follow this, but he did. I- I want to tell you something. I when I was watching John Cena's promo from Raw this week, and the part where he gets to the kid in the crowd that has the fighting cancer sign. Right here. You I, keep fighting and you never give up. You understand that? Oh, and that's for me. Listen, just amazing. Listen, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. That brought a tear to my eye. Yeah. Which Dude, one? That was very. Which <laughs> both. Both of mine. Oh, that's two tears. Both. A lot of tears. Like that was, you know, for the first time, I could, I, I honestly felt myself being a John Cena fan right there. You know, the guy throughout this whole program with Kevin Owens so far, he's stepped it up to another level, too. And I think that that's well, big think, on his part, especially to do it for someone like Kevin Owens. Well, I think since winning the U.S. title, he stepped it up. But last night, you know, and, and first off, let's not forget, Kevin Owens beat him at the Elimination Chamber. That's a huge move on Cena's part. You know, part of the thing about wrestling is is, is when you're slowly on your way out. And John Cena's 37, 38 years old. He's not going to be here forever. What you should no! do. Say it as it's so just, Johnny. Just, just, just breathe. <laughs> breathe. Remember the Lamas we taught you? Kevin breathe. Owens just beat him at a house show. That's just all breathe. that happened. Just breathe. It's a glorified house just show. Just breathe. Just breathe. <laughs> uh, don't, don't breathe uh, like that. Don't breathe like that. Uh, You're welcome. welcome. All right. So anyway, my point is, it's 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 your job to kind of put over the younger generation. That's what Cena's doing by having Kevin Owens win. You, you know, know but you, can you really call Kevin Owens the younger generation? I mean, look what their whole feud is built around. Point taken. They're not that far off in age, but... I mean, the whole mm, point of Kevin Owens' the, feud with him is like, hey, I'm not your little rookie here. I'm a veteran. I've been doing this longer than you. It's Don't. the different crop of uh, wrestler that hasn't been there yet. It's it's building someone to feud with because Orton is done. You know, uh, Jericho is done. Like, all these other feuds that have happened for years True. are done. He's now got this huge rival. Well, that begs the question, though, Dale. Kevin Owens is still the NXT champion, but now we're we're going to see him do an open invitation on SmackDown. I mean, are we going to see him on both shows now for a while? I guess we have to, right? Well, he's booked. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think so. And I, I mean, I, I don't know who's going to lose their belt to first, but I mean, I I would like to see Owen stay on the main roster. I mean, he can do double duty. It's not like NXT is. Well, he's scheduled. Too time demanding. Well, he's scheduled now. Like you know, when they ever when they give out ticket descriptions, where like when you're going to buy tickets to a live event, they list who's going to be on them, and they've added him to half of the you oh know, upcoming God. shows, like or more than half of them. Do you think there's any snowballs chance in hell he loses this open invitational on SmackDown? <laughs> no. Okay. Just no. Just, no, no. Just I figured. They'd... I I wouldn't even be surprised after all that's transpired if he doesn't end up beating John Cena again. Wow, really? For, do you think he would do it for the U.S. championship? Ah, 
Is it, they didn't mention it's not going to be a title match, is it? Is no, I don't think it's money in the bank, not yet. But I, I could see this easily going to a, a, a third. Well, it, know, it really belt. it makes you wonder because you know the way Cena comes out and he's like, "I was going to give you this belt, but you don't deserve it. You're half a man." You yeah. know. Yeah. Owens Owens didn't seem like he cared one way or the other about getting the belt. No, because to him, the NXT he, Championship is the and true I, and prize. I lo- and I love that. I love that he's, you know, for all that they're doing to try and elevate the U.S. title, in a quick way, I feel like they've really undone that, but they've elevated the NXT title in such a way that it's like, wow. Mm-hmm. And I love a good grudge match. you think this is leading <laughs> towards a, a title versus title match? Maybe? I think it could. Yeah, I think it could be title versus title. Either, either way, this title run for Cena with the U.S. championship is one of the best things that he's done in in years and years, as far as I'm concerned. It is helping out the business and the guys in the locker room and it still has a touch of patriotism to it. I mean, everything about it folds into John Cena's character so perfectly while elevating everyone around him. It, it's truly great for this. Absolutely, and man, that segment was amazing to watch. I really hope it's not leading to a champion versus champion match that John Cena wins, though, because if you put an NXT title mm-hmm. on John Cena, I feel like it really devalues the whole message and what NXT is. Yeah, but at, at the same time, I mean, you got Samoa Joe now <clears throat> coming into it's going to be an obvious feud with with Kevin Owens. I mean, Kevin Owens won the NXT title just two months after showing up. Are we going to see Samoa Joe just? Take him by storm and, and take the NXT title, Scotty. You know you might. Uh, I think I think that's the big build up match with Joe. I think Joe's got to go through a lot of guys first. I think there's a lot of featured attractions. If anything, amongst the the equivalent of a WrestleMania match is Joe versus Owens. Yes, that's the thing you want to see it build to. I hope they don't just hot shot it right away. Because I mean, yeah, there's a lot of cool matchups with Joe. But that's the money one. Like, you want to see those two bulls go at it. Do you feel like Kevin Owens versus Samoa Joe is going to go beyond a takeover match? Do you think it's going to be a main main level roster match? I think the same is with uh, Owens and Zayn. That can go on forever because there's, there's still a pocket of fans <laughs> that still have never seen those. That True. It's, it's NXT, but once you put that on the main roster and you give it the story that it's got, everybody's going to be watching that for the first time. I mean, I mean, and, and you make a good point there, Scott. You know, like we have to keep in mind that whatever the number of subscribers that the network is up to now, there's still a significantly larger number that don't have the network. So most of them, you know, when these guys come out, they're like, "Who is this NXT guy? Who is mm-hmm. this Kevin wow. Owens? Who I, is this Neville?" That's dumb it's hard for You're us right. to. It's yeah. hard for us to imagine. But like <laughs> half the world doesn't even have access to the network that still mm-hmm. watches WWE. You know? Yeah. yeah, it's dumbfounding to me that. And there's so much programming on there that they're still not even watching that show. Wow. I, for me, it's like if, you, if you're a huge wrestling fan, I don't know how you're not watching NXT. But Dale, like you know, when it comes down to it, nine ninety nine a month, not everyone can put that in their budget. So it, it, you're right. I guess a lot of people don't watch still. And you have to think about people too for younger viewers that just don't have a job or don't have parents that are going to shell out ten bucks a month for them to watch more wrestling when they can get five hours of free wrestling every week on television, just WWE wise, even more yeah. if you count the other networks. So. I mean, there's got to be a good chunk of folks. But with the Internet, there's so many ways around that kind of stuff. If you if you uh, are adamant about it, you can certainly find plenty of these matches uh, Dale, and, and at least portions of them online. Dale, I don't have a job, and my parents won't pay for it. What What is it that you're you're talking about here? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, children that don't have beards. Yeah. <laughs> I can shave it. <laughs> Did Dale, sh- can I move in? <laughs> oh, God. Can I move in? Will you buy me wrestling? <laughs> Scotty's going to D.C., Dale. We forgot to tell you before the show. We're going to let you know now. They put me in a box you with holes are, in it. You guys are breaking up. I can't I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Well, Scott wants to shave. Your beard is a little sideways. <laughs> um, all right. Guys, Heath Slater's being screwed. That's what's happening. Here's something we've been waiting for he since it happened last time. Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, back in a few. Dean Ambrose, this is a Dean Ambrose we love to see. Tossing the belt to Seth Rollins, kicking him in that tummy, hitting him with dirty deeds. And then, meanwhile, Seth Rollins is flipping out. I don't need anybody's help. I love that. She's like, I don't need anyone. Just storms out. Now we got Dean Ambrose, ladder match versus Seth Rollins at Money in the Bank. Hell yeah. I mean, there is so much awesomeness happening in this little feud that's going on there because don't forget you've got your X Factor on the outside, Roman Reigns, too, who is going to be in Money in the Bank and is probably going to win. 
I was going to ask you about that. So everyone, let's let's do a round robin here. We got six people so far in this Money in the Bank. Is Roman Reigns the clear favorite? Who are the other guys again? It's Reigns. It's um... Kofi, Ziggler, mm-hmm. Sheamus. Uh, Dale, help me out here. Uh, wait, my I, I was fixated on Roman Reigns for the second there. Why we haven't seen Bray Wyatt for a minute, and they bring him back oh, on boy. Raw, yeah, just to have him lose the fucking Roman Reigns uh, for his I'm third a- match of the night. The new face of fear. I don't know, man. I I had what, a feeling listen, that was going to come up. Listen, Dale, so I'm, irritating. I'm I hate it. I hate it. Dale, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I am a Bray Wyatt fan. I, I, I that dude is awesome. But my <laughs> thing is, as much as I love Bray Wyatt, I'm okay with the fact that it happened because I really am on this Roman Reigns bandwagon right now. And what I really want to see happen, I'm telling you, this is what I want. I'm not going to get it, but this is what I want. I want Roman Reigns to win that Money in the Bank, and then that night, cash it in and make it a three way match at Money in the Bank oh. for the championship. Here's the thing, though. I love that idea, but you cat you, oh, you cash the money in the bank and right away. That would be the exact opposite of what Rollins did. He waited quite a long time. But that would just be so fitting of what this character is. And then, and then you got it. And at that point, I say you got to take it off of Rollins and put it on either Reigns or Ambrose, or have Rollins retain and have them chase this thing into SummerSlam. And if you don't give me that three way right away. Give me that at SummerSlam. See what I would like. Yeah. I would like to see Rollins keep that title all the way to WrestleMania 32. Then we have the Shield Triple Threat we were hoping for. I think make people. Yeah, play. I think you. I, I, I agree, Johnny. I think you have to really <laughs> eventize having the Shield go one on one on one. Finally, I mean, we we got a taste of it in different ways so far, but we haven't had that. Especially if the title is involved, we haven't had that particular moment. I mean, without Randy Orton. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I really would like to see the three go off at a, at a really big event. I, I'm thinking it's SummerSlam, man. I really do think SummerSlam is going to be where that happens. You, it SummerSlam surprise. would work for me. I think that'd be cool. I mean, they do tend to, you know, speed things up a little bit. But gosh, wouldn't that be a great main event? Well, whatever the main event will be at WrestleMania 32, we're going to have a lot of them. But wouldn't that be an amazing main event between the three, you know, dudes in the Shield coming back together for the first ever triple threat. I think that would be incredible. And then also, that could be... I don't know. The question is, when will Roman cash in? Well, I think you got you have so many elements to this storyline just taking these three people that you can really... They have the opportunity to do some really good storytelling here and stretch this out. Because don't forget, there's a couple matches that can be had between Ambrose and Reigns mm-hmm. of a mutual respect thing, which we already saw kind of happen recently on that Raw when they duked it out and then you know they're always kind of doing their own thing but buddies right now you know so there's that mutual respect level that always can create a fun story believe that that's right here's my question to you guys though does Kofi have a chance because let's not forget he's been in ladder matches he's never won one he's never won a money in the bank but he's got the New Day on his side. It might be fun to see Kofi win the Money in the Bank and have New Day back him up. You're shaking your head. I understand. I just wanted to I throw like, it out there. I like New Day. We, we've gone over this. We love New Day. But I'm going to tell you what. One, Kofi disappointed me at the Elimination Chamber because he didn't get any like really, really big special spot from him like kind of was hoping we would. Mm. It's his environment. So already, boo on you, Kofi. Oh, so he's being a bad guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's Remember, bat- and when you're a heel, you're not supposed to be doing a lot of fl- high All right, all right, fine. But no, well then, all the more reason that Kofi probably will not win the money in the bank. All right. If it was Big E, would you want Big E to win? Damn you, Scott Narver. We love Damn you. <laughs> yes, I would. Dale, what are your thoughts? Does, does Kofi have a shot? And we can talk about this next week, too, but really quick, does Kofi have a shot? No, no. <laughs> well, moving on, moving on. Uh, guess what, everybody? The big guy's hungry! The Ryback is the new Intercontinental Champion. That was I. That was the least of them that I was expecting to win that match. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah! Oh, shit. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening, that applause and that music is none other than former Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion, the current head matchmaker, our friend Nigel McGinnis. Yes! How goes it, my friend? It's all right. It's a beautiful day. Um, just been rolling with the hobo. What were you doing? 
Do you got any uh, champion wrestling from Hollywood ring? Just uh, developing some new sort of in ring sort of style for my big comeback. I'm joking. I'm oh. not kind of so, so no more bump free <laughs> since 2011. No huh? more bumps. No more. What were bumps. you doing? Just, Just training. Uh, yeah, a couple of times a week, me and the Hobo, we get in the ring and we sort of roll around a little bit. And Tell me, I'll come sometime. Yeah, I don't I'll know come. what I'm doing. I'll just hang out during the week. It's uh, yeah, about about midday, about noon, we get in there and just sort of try and you know develop the style a little bit. You know, All right. but sort of with an eye towards LA fights. So ah, got it. I love that. Mm. So big news: uh, Ring yeah. of Honor. First off, War of the Worlds was freaking ridiculous. I mean, you had a bird's eye view. Yeah, you got involved, obviously. But huge news that no, I, we didn't know where it was coming. Maybe you did. <laughs> TV deal. Destination yeah. America, Ring of Honor. Uh, it's going to be Wednesday night starting, I don't, sometime in June. Yeah, well, it's actually tomorrow. Wait, that tomorrow. fast? Yep, yep. Tomorrow. All right, so, so he, away. here's my question, Nigel. Mm-hmm. Wow. How, how long is it till Ring of Honor just wipes TNA off of hey, Destination let's America? Be nice. We want everyone to succeed. <laughs> well, listen, we want Chuck. that, but we need to be realistic from it, and this is a question that people want to know. I don't understand what the uh, situation is with the company right now um, in terms of Destination America, whether they're looking at Ring of Honor as a possible replacement or whether they just want to have an extra hour of TV, something that's different that complements TNA. I'm not really sure. I don't really understand exactly the workings of it but um, they're both you know different products to to a certain extent sure. you know I think they're, they're, they're a different fan base and now with Destination America Ring of Honor is actually available I think and don't, don't quote me on this but I think they're available in more homes than WWE Really? really? I believe so. Between the, the Sinclair distribution yeah. and and Destination America, more eyeballs are going to be able to see Ring of Honor. Before we talk more about that, yeah. uh, Dale Rutledge, say hi to Nigel McGinnis. Are you sure that's Nigel, or is Scott just doing his impression of Nigel? <laughs> no, this is really Nigel, but Scott, go. No. Scott, Scott, give us your impression. All right, Dale, it's okay. We're both here. All right. I love that. Very nice. How are you, mate? How's Washington? Oh, it's great. It's great. I'm, I'm trying to tell myself that, actually. It's not Los Angeles. Yeah, it's not. But, hey, we might be seeing you again soon, buddy, so we'll see what happens. Hey. Yeah. All right, so let's get back to Destination yes. America. Um, now, is it going to be the same? Is anything changing as far as the, the shooting process or the recording or the as taping? As far as I know, no, it's the same process. Um, we've got um, three or four TVs in the um, in the bank uh, so far, you know, that, that we get already you know scheduled to be. Uh, tomorrow night, the Briscoes and the House of Truth, that's a great match. And uh, just the last TV tapings that we did, Roderick Strong and Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, I heard was um, ridiculous. Amazing. Yeah, I heard Roderick Strong got, like, MVP of the weekend uh, yeah, from a lot of people over there. He's amazing, he, he always has been, you know, ever ever since you know he started out in the company, you know, and he's done it all there. He's he's had every belt you can have, and um, he really is. He deserves that title. Well, he's one of those guys that obviously he's gotten better and better, but he's one of the guys he, you could always rely on him to be phenomenal, right? And not everyone, it, it's well, that's how you were. Like, not everyone can do that. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, he's a real talent. Uh, you know, here's the thing I want to know, mm-hmm. Nigel. I, you see a roster like this, and I'm, I'm going to single out the Briscoes here for a minute because mm-hmm. those two guys are amazing. They're, they're nothing short of it. They're yeah. two in a million. That's for right. Sure. As WWE continues to grow, you know, their NXT mm-hmm. brand, and we see a lot of guys coming, yeah. like, you know, that have been from Ring of Honor and places like that, from TNA, whatever. How long do you think it is till this roster starts getting purged? Especially now that you brought up they're going to be available in more households than WWE. Yeah, um, to a certain extent, you'd have to think there's a limit to the number of people that they can put into NXT. That's very now, true. how many are down there now? 70 or 80? I believe so. At any moment, there's always about 80 in NXT. Yeah. And by definition, there's no way that even 50% of those people will ever see the light of day. Nope, and I guess right. that's their idea. That's their theory is that the cream rises to the top and will get up to TV whenever. But at some point, they're going to have to stop. Well, maybe they're not. Maybe if they only pay 500 a week. They could have 300 people there. I, I really don't know. Um, I know they've, they've approached the Briscoes in the past uh, uh, from what I understand. Um, um, but it's, it's a big change for the Briscoes to, you know, they, they have a business there and for them mm. to move down to Florida. Right. Some people, they're willing to up and leave. And for, for, I've seen
seen certainly in WWE but certainly within pro wrestling in general that promises are only as good as when they're made you know and the people right. that make them and sometimes I've seen people up and locate and move out there to Florida and within you know a month or two it's all gone tits up so to speak and I know the Briscoes <coughs> they, they do have a pretty profitable business they run right yeah it's, chicken farming yeah the chicken farming mm-hmm. and what are those I, I'm, I would love to interview these two yeah. I'm fascinated what are they like to be around I mean are they both similar in personality <laughs> Or is yeah, one no, way... actually, they're both real good old boys, you know okay. what I mean? They're real honest, they're genuine, they're hard-working, they're passionate about their family, they're passionate about pro wrestling and Ring of Honor. And, Clearly, and they're, yeah. They're I'll fun-loving th- guys as well. They like to have a drink, they like to have, you know, they <laughs> like to hang out. I'll tell you this much. After mm. the show in Vegas that y'all did... Wow. Um, we met up with, uh, or I, I did, I met up with Jess, and she was uh, ODB, mm-hmm. and she was having drinks with them, and we all were sitting around drinking, and those boys could pound them down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those boys, wow. I, them I, boys. I, <laughs> and they are, they are some good old boys like that, like you were saying. They, yeah. they were really fun to be around. No, they're lovely fellas, they really are. And so many of the guys I've met in Ring of Honor are like that, you know. Me I mean, too, agreed, yeah. Yeah, I, I've heard horror stories about egos in, in other places, and certainly in WWE more so than, than anywhere else, but in Ring of Honor I never really felt that. There were a couple of guys that had a little bit of an ego, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But beyond that, I think because the Financials are di- such a different sort of thing there. The difference between you know being a top guy and being a guy in the middle isn't a huge, dramatic amount in terms of finances. So I, I don't think you ever sort of develop that that jealousy that you have perhaps in WWE. Well, do you think that now? We have a Destination America deal. Sinclair, we know they have money. Do you mm-hmm. think this will lead to more guaranteed contracts for Ring of Honor to assure? that roster of, of staying as strong as it is maybe? I'm not really sure. I, I, I do wonder, you know. Um, I, I know some of the, the top guys are tied mm-hmm. into strong deals right now. Um, but I, I think certainly Ring of Honor and, and arguably even WWE, it's really the brand that people come to see. Right. Um, there are certain people within the brand that are your favorites, um, but I'm not sure there are that many people that move the... Um, the needle, needle. Well, yeah. that much. I mean, I know Joe back in the day was one of those sort of guys, punk to a certain extent. Um, but beyond that, it really became the the, the product, you know, the, the brand. Well, Dale, I know you've said this before uh, that when it comes to Ring of Honor, when you hear the words Ring of Honor, you know it's going to be great to watch. It's going to be great matches, great wrestling, great in ring performing. And so, like you said before, Dale, I think that the product speaks for itself to most people. Yeah, and I think this is a great opportunity with Destination America to get more people who maybe have only heard about how cool it is or know a guy or two from there to really see the quality of the product itself. And, I, you know, I, what Chuck was saying about them pushing out DNA, I mean, I would like to think not. I know that they signed, I think it's like a 27-episode deal, which is basically equivalent of like a season one kind of vibe uh, for for uh, Ring of Honor, uh, so I'm hoping that it's just like a sort of a package, you know, like when you have several sitcoms um, back-to-back, you have like a block of interest that you have the same viewers, so I would like to think that this is a strategy for Destination America to see if they can become that destination for wrestling, so hopefully this is something that they can work hand-in-hand with TNA and just have more and more alliances there. So, so on that note, Dale, let me let me pose this question to you then, Nigel. Saying what Dale said, you know, oftentimes if there's a block on a network that's back to back, they maybe will do a uh, special guest from one of them appearing on the other. Do you think you're going to see some crossover then? Wow, between, uh, TNA no. and Ring of Honor? No, no. <laughs> not with Dixie. Of, I don't see that. <laughs> I, I don't no, I, 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 I certainly think there's no hard feelings between right. the two companies, at least from a from an office standpoint. You know, um, some of the people obviously work for TNA now work for Ring of Honor is there other people the other way around maybe mm. I'm not really sure 100% um, but yeah, I, I don't see it it was interesting as we were talking about it would be it fun there. invasion it's, or something it'd be cool but. yeah you know when you think back into the late 90s you know and you had WCW and you had WWE and you had ECW a lot of the excitement was who was going from one to the right. other and a lot of the exchanges and it was stuff that we hadn't seen in the 80s where Vince sort of essentially said WWF is the only thing out there and you know everybody went, what happens if Sting ever wrestled a Hulk Hogan 
Logan and all these sort of things, those matchups were starting to happen, you know. And so we're in a different era now, and I think because we're in Destination America now, more people, as you said, will see us, and then they'll go, maybe they watch NXT and they know Kevin Owens, and then sure. oh, now they start linking it back together. And there's there's a bit of interest there. There's a bit of a communication that gets people talking about the product and about the sport. Um but whether it, whether it will sort of turn around full pace to where it will be like it was in the late 90s, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's going to take something dramatic. You know what I'd love to see Destination America do? And, and I don't know if it's too soon, if they're still trying to get the pay-per-view buys. I would love to see them show War of the Worlds over a period of a couple nights. Because, hmm. I mean, you were there for the, the matches. I mean, God... Nakamura in the four-way, Tanahashi and Roderick Strong, Jay Briscoe and Bobby Fish. I mean, it's hard. I'm sure. I'm sure it's hard for you to pick a favorite from that weekend. Yeah, no, they don't. But, I, mean, yeah, I don't think I could, like you said. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's just for me. It's just such an honor to be part of it, you know. And I was saying a hobo this afternoon. I was like, I'm enjoying doing this, but if I'm doing it again in front of people, no way. I mean, I I watched that Nakamura Roderick Strong match, Ugh. and I'm like, never again. Nakamura. I don't know how Nakamura. I don't know how he walks the morning after his matches. I really don't. <laughs> yeah, it's I really don't. It's I mean, really good to see. Him. Did anyone make they made, everyone mad? It made it out okay from that weekend, unscathed, relatively. Yeah. And, yeah okay. Good. Some bruises, nothing too crazy yeah. but, wow what an amazing event it was I would just love to see Destination America maybe show those to people to because I mean you want to get an audience in how about this you have the mm. best of Jap- best of Japan best of Ring of Honor together yeah you start showing those clips uh, like you said to help link back in any way it's when you have that platform of TV show that you know it's the sacrifice of do you lose a little bit of what you are taping now to show the best of on these special events, but it's advertising for those things to get eyes on it. Mm. And that's, it's an exciting problem to have. Right. It's an interesting, it's, it's a change in the whole business model, you know, and we've seen that change in the business model to where in the 80s and the early 90s, TV was a promotional vehicle to get people to come to house shows. Yeah. And now within the WWE model, house shows really, I mean, that's where a lot of the guys make most of their money, but at the same time, it's not the, the, the be all and end all. Far more people are concerned about TV ratings now in and of themselves, you know, and, and that's because maybe they get most of their money from from the TV um, rights fees. Well, I'll tell you what, we couldn't be more excited for Ring of Honor, and, and hopefully Destination America, this will help them get into even more homes. Like, I know Lucha Underground, I think, helped El Rey. Like, now I get it. Mm-hmm. I really would love to see Destination America, you know, go on my direct TV as well. So hopefully well, and this you will have lead to, towards that. You have to imagine, too, if they're giving, I mean, and this is not meant to be disparaging towards TNA, but if they're giving TNA all these time slots for extra shows, you know, like they're doing that Saturday morning when I heard there's a show about Dixie in the works for Destination America. <laughs> America. You know, like if they're willing to do oh, that, like what's what's to say they won't give Ring of Honor more time? And oh, they should show that. I think that, that should be stuff. part of the deal, absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, in a lot of ways, you know, like that stuff is new to a lot of people that haven't had access to it. Right, right. I could see Kelly and Carino doing something, or I don't know, it'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. seeing profiles of the people behind the scenes and yeah. seeing that it's, it gets you more invested in the people's lives and characters. I agree, I agree, a hundred percent. But you know, even though, as I said, there's not a, uh, no heat specific between the two companies, I do right. think that that competition is a good thing. You know, fans of Ring of Honor saying, "Yeah, we love Ring of Honor; it's the best wrestling in the world," and fans of TNA saying the opposite. You know. Yeah. Like it's, I think that's healthy within sports. We see it all the that, time. If you competition sports, is yeah. good, Destination and we love seeing America it. has a chance to do something really yes. awesome here. Yes, they like do. You, they could create their own new version in this new age of a Monday Night War, so to say, on their own network. Okay, interesting. We're, we're very excited for it. Um, we got to talk about a few more things here before we go. Uh, move on a little bit. Dale, your thoughts? Ryback, new Intercontinental Champion. Go. I, I was definitely surprised. I think a lot of people were, but I mean, it's some. Um, it's he's a guy that I've only heard good stuff about, um, and and always seems to be working hard. And just to see the uh, outpouring from the wrestling community congratulating him and how nice of a guy he was also made it all the sweeter. So I think it's it's pretty cool that he finally got his first singles belt. And it was very surprising. I thought it was an, I, when him and Sheamus were were the last two left. I was like, ah, oh, this is going to be an easy one. And then I was completely surprised. So so. Two two questions to that point, and Dale, maybe you'll have some insight into this. Um, you know, one, do you think that was the way it was originally supposed to be? Had Rusev been in the match, I, I feel like it would have been more focused on Ziggler and Rusev had mm-hmm. he been available, and probably one of them might have walked out with it to continue that feud going. That's just you know, I mean, I think I, I think that's possible, but given Rusev's promo on Monday where he was like, "I have a broken foot, I have a broken spirit, I don't have my belt," like I 
I don't know if that's a rewrite just because of the scenario or if, you know, I don't know, is the injury even maybe a work? I'm not sure. But either way, I, I love this new storyline of him just being like without all the things that he had just a few months ago and seeing where they go with that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, then the, and then the other question would be is we have Seamus in here and he's shockingly, I'm going to say this, I'm loving his heel character love right it. now. Loving it. Loving it. <clears throat> but do you think they're going to keep him a heel for long? Because he does have, you know, this role in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles now that he's going to have to promote. Ah, you got but it. he's playing a bit bad guy in it. Got to so keep him bad. Got to keep him bad. Do we keep him heel to promote it, Dale? Hell yeah. What, uh, I mean, I, I think Turtles is a, a full year away, though, isn't it? Isn't that next yeah, summer? It's a ways oh, is off. It, is it that far out? Yeah, I don't think they've shot yeah. it all yet, you know? Okay, well, then never yeah, mind. They have, take, they my, to shoot, take my question off I don't think that'll really table. relate to him, but <laughs> this mean, is the best his character has been in a long time, and the crowd really hates him, so I think you don't, you don't really... It's that really facial hair, from, man. Um, until it runs out. Yeah, and unless Seamus takes out Splinter, I don't think people are necessarily going to... You know, go crazy for him and Ninja Turtles. Before we move on to Impact and Lucha, uh, all right, we had Twin Magic. I, I'm so done with trying to figure out what fans are supposed to think about the Bellas. I wish you died in the womb. No idea. <laughs> That's all I have can to they, say. Can they still pull off Twin Magic though? Really? Paige didn't even notice. Hair, really? Hair extensions, bro. Hey, Johnny, welcome to my world of not caring about them. Yeah. No. <laughs> Just saying, I don't know. If you guys want to hold hands, I'll, I'll back uh, up. No, I mean, I, hey, hey, I want to care. I just want to know what I'm supposed to think. That's all. Uh, just wanted to mention it because I know a lot of fans are saying the same thing. We just want to throw it out there. We don't know either. Trust so. your feelings. Trust your feelings, Johnny. I will trust my feelings. Uh, I will also trust <laughs> that this past Friday on Impact, we saw one of the best tag team matches we've seen in some time. So it was match two of the best of five between Dirty Heels, Bobby Roode, and Austin Aries um, taking on the Wolves. Good God Almighty. You want to see great tag team. This was unbelievable. Did they even breathe during this match? Like, I don't know if there was ever one second where they weren't doing some amazing, justifying move where each per- I mean, that was just the most action packed thing I've seen in ages. But they did it just slow enough to allow the announcers to call the match. Like, it was just done so. And of course, with these four in the ring, it's going to be perfect, but it really was a perfect match. You want to you want to talk about what else was awesome on Impact? Oh, Angle and EY. You're, Angle and EY, your real life Captain America, right there, Jesus. Kurt Angle. That man is a machine. Ten German suplexes to EY, man. Oh, gosh, I'm sitting next to you, and you got to have a little run in TNA with mm. Kurt for a while, man. I know we've talked about it before, but I just I'm going to ask you again. What what is it like being in the ring with someone that's just a machine? Is that oh, why there's no more bumps? Kurt Angle still exists. <laughs> <laughs> that is one obviously one of the highlights of my career, and uh, even outside the ring, he's as, as talented and as as wonderful. A human I've heard being. he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, he really is, and, and no ego for a guy who's that good, who got it that quickly. I mean, there are guys that you know uh, uh, can't even like you know aren't even a tenth of the rest that he is, who have ten times the ego, and it's insane. You know, I've always he said the best wrestlers don't have the biggest ego I'm because <laughs> shut your mouth <laughs> no, <wankers. laughs> no just and certainly bell to bell you know yep. one of the best of, the, of his generation or perhaps even any generation you know I think he would have done great back in the day with um, you know Danny Hodge or any of those oh, can you sort imagine? Of yeah, Jesus. yeah it was absolutely amazing to be out there with him and you know, for him to enable, to allow me to have input as well and for it to be a 50-50 sort of you know split in terms of input put and give and take and ad lib and, and that's the real art form that's the beauty of it and that's why he's just absolutely such a an amazing amazing wrestler and the fact that he can still do it after all these injuries yeah. and, you know. well, the, well, well I will tell you the, the chemistry between Desmond Wolf and Kurt Angle <laughs> on yeah. the mic was phenomenal it was really good and you mentioned outside the ring too I've heard multiple stories about how Kurt has gone to bat he really is Captain America when it comes to... We all know TNA is not the easiest company to deal with. And we've heard multiple stories about how Kurt Angle will go to bat for other people. Hmm. And that's that takes a lot for someone to do. So that's Look, cool. he's... You know, and here's the thing. Like, it, earlier in the show, we were talking about, you know, how, like, John Cena is handing over that torch and, like, allowing these young guys to come in. You know what I mean? Kurt's consistently done that in TNA, you know, pretty much since he's been there. He will go against these young guys. Look at the feud he's had with EC3. You Ooh. know, look at look at what he's... I mean, EY is not a young guy, hey. but look what he's doing, you know, like, in this feud with EY. Look what he did when he... You know, with you when you came in, Nigel. You know what I mean? Like, he... he 
he does this. He's and he's, let's give credit to EY. I think oh, wow. Angle and EY. This is like getting up there for feud of the year. They are really. I, I I say it every time we bring EY up. I'm sure everyone in here will echo this sentiment. He is one of the most underrated wrestlers there is out there. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Even the way they opened the show for for this week's Impact with with EY driving in his car, pulling up, and then Angle's just waiting outside for him. Just just the simple interaction of it. I don't know. EY just knows how to deliver on every angle. Yeah, ah, yeah. Uh-huh. There's there's and, n- there's never any wasted moments when no. when they're given a segment when they're given something to do. Both guys, it's always. They know to not waste that opportunity, which is always yeah. great to see. That's what you always want to see when watching something. If you're watching a three-hour RAW, if you're watching a two-hour Impact, you want whatever whatever talents involved. You want to see something interesting. You want to see their ideas conveyed, and you want to see them have their voice. And those guys always, always do that. And there, I know we don't have a lot of time left. There's so many good things of, of Impact this past week. Uh, Rockstar Spud, uh, now a two-time X Division champion. Congrats to him. He's gold on the mic every time. He's amazing in the ring. Such a, a guy you want to root for. And uh, Anderson, Ken Anderson, EC3, they had a fantastic match. Anderson hit a swanton on EC3 and the mic check, but EC3 hits the uh, one percenter and gets the win. Still undefeated, and I got to believe he's going to be the next in line to go after Angle for that title. Yeah, it needs to happen. You know, yeah, it's it undefeated. Needs, it, it needs that match needs to happen. We never really got yep. an end to that feud, and it. You know, I think it's something that they've done a really good job of holding off on. Yep. And they really built it up without even like like we're still <clears> talking <throat> about it, and they mm-hmm. haven't really done anything with each other in mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. You and know. Before we close out on TNA, and I don't know if Dale, you got a chance to read this tweet, but I thought that you know with all the the stuff surrounding TNA right now, this is aside from Ring of Honor. There's been a lot of weird buzz about TNA about what how Dixie's handling things with Destination America. <laughs> I thought Austin Aries had a great tweet because we have a lot of people that make jokes on Twitter that say negative things. This tweet really puts it in perspective. He says, no matter whose wrestling companies you root for or hate on, remember the human element. We're all working people to provide just like you. That's what wrestling fans, why would you ever root for any company to fail? You want people you, to have jobs. you like I rooted for No, it. I'm not looking at you. I'm You're looking, looking at me like no. you. Listen, listen. I'm I not have looking at you at all. Of, listen, I have always been one of TNA's biggest, you know, I wasn't looking at you. I'm but, talking to fans in general, when we see people online, don't ever root for any You're any company. Who are those, Chuck? He's got to look at you. <laughs> you. You want the we all want the business to thrive. So just watch what you say online because people really could be affected by it. Yeah. And options are great. It's like what you were saying earlier, Nigel. It's it's if there are two wrestling brands on one channel, you want that excitement of yeah. competing with one another and doing something different and having something else to to watch. Right. I, I think a lot of people, a lot of fans feel as though TNA, to a certain extent, hasn't put out the product that they wanted to see, and they had the opportunity to do that on a right. number of occasions and kind of dropped the ball, and then I think they feel a little bit of, that they, they, they want to get vengeance, and they want to get revenge, and they want Maybe. to say, if they go out yeah. of business, it's their fault, and they like to do that. Just, know? And that's human nature, the, but you like, know the like deal. Harry said, you know, there are a lot of guys that work for that company that had nothing to do with that and that's going to cost them. The problem is if TNA doesn't thrive, it's literally the fault of like two or three people. Like it's not anyone else's fault. And the damn shame about it all is is that if you watch TNA, they're consistently putting on good matches. Agreed. They're not giving you a bad product Mm. but when there's such a sour taste in your mouth from something, it's hard to look at that good and enjoy it. I think the bigger picture though really is when we're constantly thinking about the current fan base and that's the people that watch and I, I saw it all the time when I was there. There are about a million, maybe million, one million, two people who will watch TNA every week. And they'll watch it pretty much whatever's on there. And, and so the little blips, to me, I, I don't think that's the big issue. The big issue is the people that were watching in the late 90s, the people who are now watching UFC or watching mm-hmm. other products, why aren't they tuning in? What is right. it that, that pro wrestling isn't giving them that we can give them, that we can draw them back in with? Because that was a question in the early 90s that people never really answered. It just it just came into being because of ECW's effect and because of Austin and everything else that happened and the, the Attitude Era, that, that things changed and, and then they started pulling in fans that weren't watching in the early 90s. That's where I feel we need to start looking, you know, and I think so we can really that. be doing that. LA, LA Fights. Oh, LAFights.com. <laughs> LA That's fights. right. LAFights.com. <laughs> it's funny, I was interesting, I was thinking about that just the other day, you know, and I'm thinking about, you know, how can we sort of like innovate and, and evolve pro wrestling 
sometimes it feels like it's not even pro wrestling. I'm trying to create something completely different. Right. It's still scripted fight entertainment, but it's not pro wrestling. You have pro wrestling, and it's like apples and oranges, two separate things, both entertaining. They can both draw make people and make money, but this is just something, because of the world that we live in today, we can take a little bit from pro wrestling and turn it into something amazing. Totally agreed. Now, Dale, I know this is the moment you've been waiting for all week. <laughs> it's Lucha Underground time before we get into our phone call with Booker T. We had everything in, in one hour. We talk about one hour of great TV like Ring of Honor gives us. This is another one hour of great television. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, God, that death match. Oh, God, my God, my God. Mel <laughs> in Phoenix, Dale. Go right ahead. Uh, I mean, Lucha Underground is so good. I don't even get it in English here. I'm watching it in Spanish and still having an awesome time. <laughs> um, but, Did they dub but, the promos over too, Dale? Say what? Did they dub the promos over into Spanish also? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, when we were, when you're there live, um, you know, they're doing the re-announcing in both languages. They just They just cut it separately. So they have one version right. for everything. Some of the wrestlers are speaking Spanish and some of them are being dubbed. Got it. In Spanish, but it is a it is a fully 100 percent Spanish product. There you go. Anyway, um, death match, go. But uh, no Mortes and and Phoenix. I want to say just. I mean, it, it's been a minute since we've seen the two of them go at it. The last time was in a, a, a coffin match, and um, honestly, these two guys, I would I would put them up for for feud of the year. I mean, just yeah. everything that they do is is amazing, and and I I, I don't know if you you know if you saw the. Hell, a bump that that Phoenix took like oh. through a room. I mean, as far like through a roof and into a room. I don't even know, you know, the the full effect of it, but just great television, top to bottom. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, I, I hope we see more from these guys. And now, you know, now Mel Mortez has his little clan that he's got. And then I don't think we've had a, a on screen slaying before on <laughs> wrestling entertainment across the board. That but, was very Mortal uh, Kombat-y. Go ahead, tell us about it. Uh, Dario Cueto, um, he he did his thing. He's got his, uh, some kind of monster, some kind of beast is, is down in the cellar. He's got that key that he wears every week around his neck, and I guess that thing got hungry, but he sure did feed one of his lackeys to, Nigel's uh, like, are we talking about wrestling still? Let me explain it to Nigel. So, the innovation you're looking for, a monster <laughs> in a basement. There's, there's a three-man <laughs> three uh, three faction. I don't know their... I, I can't think of all their names on Lucha. I know B-Boy is the one who got fed to this monster. Um, what is, uh, We're what, still what talking they, wrestling. Yeah, what are the other guys? Like? Anyway, there's a, Ish. there's a CD Robert Rodriguez Pulp Fiction style segment that happens to close out the show hmm. these three guys the crew didn't get the job done in some instance that he wanted right. and Dario Cueto who's the leader of Lucha Underground he says El well, Jefe El Jefe hmm. the boss he says well you realize what must happen and who's going to make the sacrifice and well they chose uh, they chose B-Boy like I said I don't know his, I forget the character's hmm. name of Lucha Underground and they, they fed him to this monster thing and all you saw was blood splatter everywhere all over the place <laughs> Like I said, it's like Mortal Kombat meets right. It's, it's so cinematic. Yeah, it's, I mean, that is actually what Lucha Underground is entirely, isn't it? It's a little bit so, Mortal Kombat, a little he, bit rough. Did he die? Was that the? We can assume he died. There's a lot of blood, huh? Or maybe he will come back as a new wrestler. Maybe he's like Mil Muertes. Watching you explain that to Nigel was like explaining wrestling to your dad when he walks in and sees you watching something <laughs> weird. And he's like, "What's going on?" And you explain, and you go, "Huh? Oh, all right, <laughs> so true." <laughs> Yeah. It takes all sorts, you know. It's a different angle and a different approach. And good TV is good TV, and bad TV is bad TV. Yep. That's all there is to it, you know. And that's what that was. And so, Dale, to close out Lucha Underground, any other uh, thoughts? I mean, uh, Prince Puma and Hernandez had a great match for the title. I mean, that, that was I would put that in, in match of the year contendership. I mm -hmm. mean, there was just so many spots in that that were great and just pure wrestling skill from both those guys. And, uh and this is really Prince Puma's year. I mean, it's, it's, as far as Lucha Underground goes, to be the man, and you, you just nobody can take him down. And I, I think that's that's great. I hope he stays strong. Yeah, and I don't even know how many flips he hit, he went in the when he went in the air. It, it, it's not even a what the, I don't even know what the hell you can call it. He he flipped like five times before landing. Hernandez the Hernandez threw him into the the barrier between the audience and him. Puma landed on his feet on top of the barrier and jumped backwards all in one, you know, it was no breath in between, all in one sweep. 
and landed uh, on on top of Hernandez. It was just, I mean, oh, it was got, it was amazing. You got to give Hernandez some props here too for yeah. being able to pull off this stuff. Is such a big man. Hell yeah, man! It was a good match. Why can't Puma play Spider Man? Why do we need Tobey <laughs> Maguire and wimpy, wimpy white dudes? <laughs> He's already got a mask too. Yeah, just an idea, Dale. You're the Marvel guy. Well, I think they picked a pretty young guy to play Spider-Man. Whatever. They, they picked Tobey Maguire. I'm just he played it, he played <laughs> no, it like no, 15 no. years ago. The new one. All right. Uh, well, before we call Booker T, uh, Nigel, at McGinnis Nigel on Twitter. Is there anything else we could... Uh, just we could Ring of Honor is it. Tomorrow night. Yes. Destination America, one day away. 8 Ring p.m. Ring of Honor. Uh, if you're on Twitter... Hi, Nigel, are we going to see you on the debate, debut? Are you going to be on there? Uh, I don't think my, my, my segment is on the, the, the initial... Uh, I'm not watching that. No, I'm just kidding. You're the monster in the basement waiting. I, I, I set up most of the matches, so yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you're on Twitter, um, hashtag watch Ring of Honor, ringofhonorwrestling.com. Check it out um, and just keep supporting. Yes, and actually if you're listening to this, it's, it's you're already on Wednesday. So that's tonight at 8 p.m. You can watch Ring of Honor on Destination America. So Nigel. It's amazing to have you back on. Thank you, sir. Nice to be here, boys. No doubt. All right. Without further ado, let's get to our phone call with Booker T. What a return we're about to have in the Wrestling and Padre Slamcast. He's been with us since day one. He is the godfather of this show, the godfather of reality of wrestling, the flagship of Texas wrestling. He's a WWE Hall of Famer. You can see him every single night on Monday Night Raw. Find him on Twitter at Booker T 5 x It feels good to say welcome back, Booker T. Hey, what's up, guys? How are you feeling, man? You are busy, dude. Yeah, man, getting ready for tough enough. You know what I mean? That right there is going to really throw things, throw a monkey wrench in everything as far as my scheduling going, you know. So I'm, um, I'm excited, but um, it's going to be a rough, rough 10 weeks coming up. Well, yeah, you mentioned tough enough, and I'm glad you did right off the bat. So you're going to be obviously a trainer. Are you? St- you're still going to be on Raw, and then you're still going to operate Reality of Wrestling. Yeah, I'm trying, man. Um, we may have to juggle my schedule a little bit, you know what I mean? Because um, being uh, going straight from Raw every week to um, straight to Tough Enough, it's going to be it's going to be a tough deal um, to have to do that every week for ten weeks. So we may have to, you know, change my schedule around a little bit as far as that goes. And I'm, I'm totally willing uh, to do that. Um, but uh, it's going to be great at the same time to be able to have the experience to do Tough Enough again to actually go out there and train the, the young guys coming up in the business as, as well as um, you know get a rub off of it for reality of wrestling um, at the same time you know to let people know I'm exactly you know you know what I'm doing out there as far as trying to get the young guys of the future to that next level um, of the business and uh, that is WWE Booker speaking of reality of wrestling can we expect to see any of your kids on Tough Enough this season Hey, man, that's up to them, man. You know, they don't want to send the video in. Uh, there's no backdoor uh, way into, you know, tough enough or anything like that. You got to, you know, really um, be one of the chosen few. And you got to understand there's thousands among thousands of um, videos being sent in every every week, you know. Um, so um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a large um, variety that they have to pick from. So that's totally on them. But um, if one of my guys make it, hey, man, I'm going to be right there to support them the whole way. But I won't be giving them any any favors or anything like that. Absolutely. Now, have you gotten to see a lot of the videos? <laughs> There's some funny ones. You know, I've, I've watched a couple, you know what I mean? It's not my job, you know. I don't, I don't have to actually <laughs> pick the uh, contestant, you know what I mean? I just have to do the job to go out there and train them myself. So, again, as well as Lita, you know, we're going to go out there and do our best to do our job, you know. And then, you know, um, Daniel Bryan, Hulk Logan, and those guys, they're going to have their job. Um, you know, Chris Jericho's going to have his job. Everybody, the, the thing is going to be a whole lot different than it was on the last Tough Enough Around. So, uh, just everybody's going to have their um, certain role. If we play our roles, I think it'll come out to be a Great, great show. And the good thing about having Lita there, at least now, you don't have to teach people how to do the swanton, so that's off your plate at least, right? Well, no, no, I wouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's at your own risk. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, stuff like that. You know, that's, like, you know that's, that's the thing that I'm looking forward to actually going out there and doing, though, is actually, uh, so I'm the teacher on this uh, among this group. You know, you know, Billy Gunn, you know, he's going to be more of the trainer and the coach. You know, Lita um, is going to, you know, do her thing, you know, as far as go out there and teach those 
Chris Davis how to be divas as well as some of those guys how to go out there and do their thing, you know. So uh, my role is uh, hopefully it's going to be a whole lot different this time um, as far as giving knowledge, letting these guys know that this is Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. Um, this is the highest form of acting that they're ever going to, um, you know, experience. And, you know, it's going to be up to them to go out there and pull it off from a um, know-how perspective. So I'm looking, I'm looking so forward to actually going out there and being able to be that guy. Awesome. Now, Booker, is there anything, like, one thing in particular when these contestants come on that you're going to be looking for and then, like, that one thing that you always look for in someone? You know, wrestling is a it factor type thing, you know what I mean? You, you either have it or you don't. And uh, I'm going to be looking for that guy that's, or that young lady that's willing to go out there and put themselves out there from an entertainment perspective, you know, and if they could do that, uh, they can be uh, one of the chosen a few. Um, but it's not going to be easy. I'm going to be looking for the uh, in- intangibles, the small things, the things that, you know, don't happen, um, you know, um, when doing a big wrestling spot or move or anything like that. So it's going to be uh, it's gonna be fun, you know, to actually be able to go out there and see which one of them have. Right. Now, Booker, I want to shift gears on you a little bit. This week on Raw during commentary, you made a comment about when Dean Ambrose didn't come to the ring and Roman Reigns did, where you come from, that's called backup. And my understanding is that this week, someone that's your backup got signed to a WWE Legends contract. How'd that come to be? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, hey, man, it just came. You know, I had, I had nothing to do with that. You know, my brothers, you know, made themselves relevant. You know, the past, you know, couple of years. You know, uh, and then especially with reality of wrestling over this last year, you know, he's made himself relevant. Um, going out there and doing stuff. You know, wildcat wrestling. Uh, going out doing, um, you know, um, signing stuff like that. His name has, you know, become a buzz again. You know, people was like, wait a minute, Steve Ray, he's this guy. He's still around. <laughs> what are you thinking all these years? You know, so I think uh, somebody finally got wise and said, "Hey, man, let's get all the heat under the bat. Um, you know, get Stevie Ray in here. Um, you know, there's a lot of merchandise that I'm still out there, still be had. Um, people still want it. Uh, the video game." You know, um, definitely um, a Legends match, the Road Warriors versus Harlem Heat. You know, people really never got a chance to see it, you know, play out from a realistic perspective. They can do it on the video game, you know, and all the other great tag teams. You know, so uh, I say, uh, you know, it's great, you know, that my brother, you know, I congratulated him, you know, first of all, you know, when he, uh, you know, gave me a call and told me it went down. I'm like, wow, you know, it's finally happening, you know. So, you know, there's something that, you know, you know, 14 years uh, later, you know, it's finally happening, you know, we thought it would have happened that, you know, myself, you know, back in 2001, but now, 2015, you know, Booker T and Stevie Ray still going strong, you know, that right there is a milestone. Absolutely. Now, the question that's on everyone's mind gotta after this news, it. gotta ask it, are we gonna see one more match in a WWE ring with Harlem Heat? Come on now. Hey, man, you know, I, I've always said, you know, never say never. Um, I always said, you know, I, I would be willing to do that, you know, if the opportunity was, you know, presented. But it wasn't something I was going to go out there and look for or anything like that. This is totally unexpected for me. My brother getting the Legends contract and him and I are going to be under the same banner again after this many years, you know. And now to, um, to even speculate that, you know, it could be, a, you know, Harlem Heat, if real you know, Harlem Heat final match, you know, on the big screen uh, for the fans to see it. Man, it would be great. You know, we got WrestleMania coming up in Texas, um, in Houston, uh, excuse me, in Dallas. Wow. You know, it's and, too uh, early to start campaigning. Yeah, back. <laughs> say what? We're starting the campaign Can right now. Can we start the campaign now? Because we already know they got to put you in the Hall of Fame this year, right? Well, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, you know what I mean, but it would be great to see Harlem Heat go in there as well uh, from a tag team perspective. But to, to have that, you know, match. You know, you know, and you know, well, my brother and I, we started our career in Dallas. You know what I mean? Uh, in, in the sportatorium, that you know what I mean. So to be able to finish it, and, you know, we went back then. We started in front of maybe fifty people, and now we're gonna if we could finish it in front of a hundred thousand. Can you imagine the story that could be written? You know, that's another book, man. You know, uh, you know. So um, I tell you, um, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be awesome just to have him under the banner. You know, but to be able to even have the thought to be able to finish. 
other shit like that is awesome. And hey, we all know Harlem Heat's undefeated in 2015. So come on now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? And we've been champions everywhere we've gone. You know what I mean? You know, so uh, to be able to just go out there and finish it uh, the way we started it, it will be uh, poetic justice. Uh, uh, it will be uh, the greatest thing that could whatever happen. You know, for me as a performer, as a wrestler, as you know, a kid who never dreamt this big. You know, so um, I'm, I'm I'm just looking forward to seeing what's what's going to happen next. Right now, in a perfect world, let's say Harlem Heat does get inducted into the Hall of Fame next year, Booker. Who's inducting you guys? Oh, man. Yeah. Man, that's a hard question right there, man. I, I don't even know, man. I, I haven't even thought that far ahead. You know, I better let you know what my head is on that right there. <laughs> Absolutely. But, uh, I, I'm serious. I, I couldn't even imagine... You know, uh, my mother's not around to do it, you know what I mean? You know, so it will be a thoughts up, you know, that's something that him and I will have to discuss and talk about very lengthily, you know what I mean? Because um, I can't even imagine who, who that would be. I'd like to think, you know, Paul Bosch will be watching from above, though. You know that much. Oh, man, you know, Paul Bosch definitely will be watching, you know, and, you know, shedding a couple of tears for the guys that's living in his, his footsteps, you know, still trying to keep his stream alive, you know, as well, you know. So I tell you, man, every, everything that's happened in this life, you know, has been, you know, been great. I think it's, you know, happening for a reason. Definitely my brother being, you know, uh, part of WWE for, for a reason because, this, you know, man, it's like I said, 14 years past and, you know, uh, people would have thought, you know, no way this would happen now in 2015, you know. So everything happens for a reason, and we're going to go out here and we're going to make the best of it. And like I say, you know, lobby for it, guys. Uh, oh, yeah. um, go out there and, um, you know, push for that, that, that one final match, you know, for uh, Booker T and Stevie Ray. Uh, because I think it's it's, it's well-deserved um, that just like Steen um, had a chance to make that walk one time, I think it would only be uh, I'm like again probably just for Booker T and Stevie Ray to be able to make that walk one time. Trust us. We will do everything in our power. Here. Yeah. It started here on After Buzz on the Wrestling Compadres with Booker T. And on Podcast One. Hell yeah. Stevie Ray, Booker T, one last match, WrestleMania 31. Get the campaign going, guys. No, 32, 32. 32, 32, <laughs> sorry, 32. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or WrestleMania Star or whatever it is this year. Booker, before we let you go, we know how busy you are. Uh, what's the next reality wrestling event coming up? Yeah, it's coming up um, in two weeks, uh, two Saturdays from uh, um, the 14th. What is that? 14th, 13th? What is that? June. Uh, is it a Saturday night? That would probably make it what, yeah, June it? 20th or something? No, it's it's, it's uh, the second June, Saturday yeah. of the month in June. Oh, second Saturday of the month. Okay, so that'd probably be June 13th. There you go. There we go. Yeah, 13th, 13th. Yeah, 13th. That's going to be the big show. I mean, I'm not going to say, guys, I'm sorry. I mean, that's something I should know it being my company. You know? <laughs> but I've been, like, I've been, like, busy. Like, Your crazy, schedule's uh, got you all over the, the place. Comic book coming out. Um, you know, uh, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro it's, it's, like, going crazy, you know. And actually, we're getting ready for the next issue to come out. And then we're going to be getting ready for the, the next issue to come out. It's going to be an ongoing thing, you know. And, you know, like I said, the radio show has literally been heating up like crazy. Heated conversation every every week has been heating up. I had Vicky Guerrero on last week, and she was totally awesome, you know, to have, have Vicky come out of the shadows. We hadn't seen her heard from her for a while, for a while you know. And, you know, um, and WWE has been keeping me totally swamped underwater, but I'm loving every bit of it. i got to suck it up, you know, just take a deep breath sometime to come up for air. But um, we're going to stay in the trenches, man, as long as I can, man. Booker T is rolling right now, and um, i got a lot, a lot of things happening. Sounds good. Well, Booker, thank you so much again once we, uh, for your time. It's great to have you back on the show, and uh, congratulations and everything, and we're going to keep a uh, close eye on stuff. And any time you have a second, I know Chuck will let us know. We want to have you back as often as we can. So uh, just keep it up bro, and sleep when you can. Give me, give me a call, bro. Uh, the compadres is always available. Um, you know, so uh, let's keep doing that thing like we always have, man. Listen, compadres, man, we're here to stay. You know, I saw, uh, I saw a tweet. Um, uh, uh, last week, and it said, you know, why is Booker T picture on the wrestling for Padres? Because I make him Padres, you idiot. That's right. So, ah. so, uh, so uh, you guys, I got to get out of here. Got to get ready to head down to the school. Get ready to get some work done. Uh, but uh, we're going to keep on doing it like it's supposed to be done. I'll holler at you guys. You're the best, Booker. Later, man. Bye, right, bro. God, it felt good to have Booker T back.
Hilarious. It's always it's always fun to talk with him. Mm-hmm. I've known Booker for a long time. This man is busier than all get out right now. So the fact that he made the time to talk with us today, awesome. And you know what would even be a little bit more awesome? I mean, one half of Harlem Heat is really cool. Yeah, but Dale, what do you think about having another half of Harlem Heat? Can we do that? I don't know. I think it's possible. Let's see if we can get Stevie Ray on the line. All right, it is now time for one of the favorite guests ever on the Wrestling and Padres. He is a friend of the show, and as of this past weekend, not only is he a 10-time WCW Tag Team Champion, he's now a WWE legend. He's got that contract. Give it up for Stevie Ray. What's up, sir? How you doing? What's going on, bro? Not much. Congratulations. We're so excited to have you on. Just days. It got announced uh, a few hours before the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, and now here you are on the show. So you got that Legends contract, meaning Harlem Heat is reunited just in, in another facet. How cool is that? That is really cool. Very cool. And uh, very appreciative. Of course. What's the? Is there any plan to start off as far as a Legends contract? Or obviously, I don't know what you can tell us, but what does that entail? You can make any kind of appearance or, or anything like that. Well, as of right now, the Legends contract is uh, being gone over by my attorney. Hmm. The fee for everything's on the uh, up and up, and we're satisfied with everything. And until we sign some things, uh, well, until we look over everything, then. To sign the contract, ah. then I can give you more detail on those kind of things. Got it. So, in other right, words, so, so, so in other words, this is this is almost a done deal. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is, um, this is almost a done deal. It's, it's a done deal, but you know there could be a couple of things that we might want to discuss. Okay. So, in other words, suck has got to know it's not quite a done deal, but it's close. It's very very close. Listen, we ain't going to have no yaks or fruit booties messing this up. <laughs> Steve Ray's going to get this taken care of. Let, let, let's hope not. Let's hope not. You know? <laughs> well, that begs the question. Harlem Heat is undefeated this year. You guys reunited to, to defeat the Heavenly Bodies Reality Wrestling. We're, we would love to see a Reality Wrestling reunion in the WWE. How, how amazing would it be to, to walk down that ramp in the WWE? Is that something that you'd be on board for? Well, contractually, um, yes. Uh, that uh, that just may happen. Okay. We never know. We never know. And that, that would be that would be uh, that would be something to see. That would be something to behold. But uh, you know what we're doing is just hey man, we're just going with the flow, and hopefully everything that's got anything to do with Harlem Heat or Booker T and Stevie Ray, as long as it's positive and as long as it's giving back to this business as which we love so much, it's, it's all good with me. Exactly. And I know a lot of people are excited because now Harlem Heat will actually be in the video games, I believe. That's pretty awesome, too. Well, you know, I don't know contrary to what a lot of people may know or think, the Harlem Heat is already in a lot of video games. And uh, that may be some of the things I'm discussing. Oh, right, very good. Interesting. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, give us an update on uh, on your everything with reality wrestling. How's that been going for you? Reality wrestling is going real good. Uh, Stevie Ray uh, a few weeks ago went down to uh, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, and fought uh, Shane Taylor. Came out of retirement for one night to fight Shane Taylor, the heavyweight champion of the Wildcat Sports, and I had to put the kid in his place. Oh, and now Stevie Ray is the new Wildcat heavyweight champion. What? Congratulations. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. See, you see, Johnny, he's getting primed for that one more match at WrestleMania. He's getting ready. Days. WrestleMania 32, Dallas, Texas. We're ready. You know. <laughs> so, you know, I'm back in training. Uh, I've shared pounds. I'm looking good. You know, not as good as I'm going to be looking. So, uh, Stevie Ray is getting ready to get back on that horse, and uh, Shane Taylor was my first victim, but he will not be the last. All right. That's what I'm talking about. How's everything going with the academy? Are you able to, to help out some of the trainees as well? well actually, I, the academy has been training myself more than uh, just giving a little expert tutelage, if you will. Uh, nice. A little expert tutelage, but I've actually been using the academy to train myself getting ready for uh, I'm throwing my name back in the uh, back in the wars of the ring and uh, I want to be ready 
Okay, okay. So love it, Stevie. With that being the case, if there was one person down there at Reality of Wrestling right now that you could face, who would it be? I'm sorry. What was that again? That I could what? If there was one person that you would want to face at Reality of Wrestling right now, who would it be? Well, in all actuality, you know, my contract with Reality of Wrestling is to be a sports advisor. And that's what I am in Reality of Wrestling. But outside of Reality of Wrestling, Steve Ray is doing what he wants to do. All right, well, so, well I'm just going to say this right here, Stevie. I want to see you face Ryan Davidson. Ryan Davidson is my number one. I, I know I know this. He's my number one client. But you know he's going to have to he's turn on you at some point. Man, huh? He's going to have to turn on you at some point. <laughs> I don't know. Ryan Davidson is what he is because of me. Wow. He turns against me. Ryan Davidson will lose everything but the draw that he wears <laughs> when he goes to bed. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. Never one to hold words. Now, before we let you go, I know you're busy. I want to ask you, you're a big sports fan. I know you're not one to hold your tongue about certain athletes. I got to ask you about Johnny Manziel. What are your thoughts on this dude? Is he ever going to get it together? I don't know if you. I don't know if you followed any of the slapjack Tuesdays. I do from last year on Steve on my Twitter account. Did you follow any of them? Uh, of course. Well, then I don't know if you remember any of them. But uh, as far as Johnny Manziel goes, I'm tired of talking about this guy. Okay. This guy is not even worth conversation. I don't understand how people can get top-notch billing on sports programming and mainstream media that has not done anything in professional sports. Agreed. He's done a lot in amateur sports, playing against teenagers. He's done nothing against men that got to pay their mortgage. It is a big, big difference. Johnny Manziel would never be a starting quarterback unless everybody died on the team. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't agree more. Go ahead, Chuck. I mean, well, then in that same vein, tell me what you think about Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow will never be a starting quarterback in the NFL either unless everybody in the United States was nuked. Okay. <laughs> but he's a good guy to have in the locker room. Would you agree on that? I think he is. No, I would, no, I would not agree on that. That's where people... <laughs> Well, I lose a lot of people. Just because the guy is a nice guy, just because the guy is a God-fearing person like other people are, just because the guy wears it on his sleeve, why would I want him in the locker room? As far as I'm concerned, God cares nothing about anybody, no more than someone else that's in the NFL. 32 teams, some 1,700 people. As far as I'm concerned, God cares about them all, not just him. All right. right. So basically, if you're not good enough, then get out of the kitchen. And Tim Tebow's not good enough, so no point in having him on a team. I'm tired of the Kim Kardashian type people in professional sports. (laughs) Kim Kardashian, at least she got on camera and had a good time and became famous. Okay. That's what she's famous for having sex. On a video. <laughs> Other than that, what kind of talent does she have? She got when I was growing up, people had to have talent to be talked about. If you didn't have talent, you didn't get talked about. Things have changed. Tim Tebow, sports training quarterback, doesn't sound about feeling generous. Tim Tebow, people say that he's better for the NFL if he's starting for somebody. My, you know what. Yeah. Come on. Okay. This guy's <laughs> nothing. He'll never be nothing. He was born nothing. And he'll die nothing. This is, this, is a, this is a fun game, Johnny. I like playing word association with Stevie <laughs> I think, Ray. I think we're done. Like, there's, there, like I think we got to save it for another time with you, Stevie, yeah. but I feel like people are going to want to know what you think about Justin Bieber oh, and what wait. you think about, you know, I'll just Let, leave let's it. Not, another time we want to have Stevie on a lot more. But, Stevie, <laughs> congratulations on the very, very close-to-be-happening Legends contract. Thank you so much for the time. It's always a thrill to have you on, and, and you're gold, man. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem, brother. Thanks a lot. All right. Talk to you soon, buddy. All right. Cool. <laughs> All good, guys. That was really good. Hey, Alexis. Hi. That was awesome. Oh, 
Oh, wow. You want a great show. We gave you Booker T. We gave you Stevie Ray. We gave you Nigel McGuinness. Who and we gave off. you Scott Narver. And we gave you Scott Narver from Curtain Jerks. Hey! How good did that feel for you, Scotty? I felt pretty good. Yeah. I felt pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty. pretty. They'll join in pretty. Yes, we are. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm, I gotta say, I do, I do love it when uh, Booker T refers to himself as a compadre. That was amazing, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna tell you what else. We're gonna have to figure out a way to start this game with Stevie Ray because word association with Stevie Ray is probably one of the coolest things we can make we a little, get to do. <laughs> yeah, we can make like a little audio intro. <laughs> oh, like, word association with Stevie Ray. Something Scott's to know. <laughs> I think that's it right there, maybe. I don't know. But I think you just made it, yeah. I just love the fact that Booker brought up that one tweet, because that tweet pissed me off, too. Some oh, listener yeah. who clearly is new to the show said, how come Booker's on your, your logo when he's not even on the show? It's like, how about you look at the previous 68 or 69? Like, look at the other episodes, dude. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Johnny. It just annoys me. It's like, don't tweet something negative at us without doing your research. Yeah, tweet something well, negative doing your knows. research. Now he knows. I can't. I can't wait for that that guy to listen to listen to the show and hear yeah, yeah, yeah. response from Booker T. Damn right. Anyways, what a show it was. Let's close out because uh, oh um, yeah, do the survey for Podcast One as a reminder. Just go to podcastone.com, hit up that survey for us. We already told you about it earlier in the show. Just do it for us. A couple minutes, and that's all we ask of your time. And make sure you click the box that you listen to the compadres. So Dale Rutledge, why don't you put yourself over? I am the Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter, and you can also find me on YouTube.com slash Dishing on Movies. That's right, Chug Rice. You can find me on Twitter at CRice17. You can find me on Instagram at Chuck Rice, and yeah, cool. And Mr. Scott Narver. Boss, man. <laughs> you can listen to my comedy wrestling podcast, <laughs> Curtain Jerks, available on iTunes and SoundCloud. You can listen to my video game podcast, 16 Bits Podcast, available on SoundCloud and iTunes. And also, if you want to check out Dave Made a Maze, a movie that just wrapped with John Morrison and myself in there, uh, you can uh, follow it on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Uh, just search Dave Made a Maze, and you will find all the info. I'm on a roll, baby. Killing it. And congrats to Steve on that project, too. Yes. Uh-huh. Steve, Steve. We yeah. love Steve Sears, your Man. partner on Curtain Jerks. Mm-hmm. Got to have him on sometime. All right, at Wrestling Buds on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Buds. Please go like the page. Want to keep that growing. Also, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm at Jay Quasto on Twitter. La Jolla Comedy Store, June 5th and 6th. That's this weekend. And Denver Comedy Works, June 25th to 28th. If you're in Denver, it'd be great to see you out. Otherwise, uh, thank you guys so much. It's so fun. If you're listening to us on AfterBuzz TV or watching on AfterBuzz, thank you. Podcast One, iTunes, wherever you're at. Appreciate it. Keep spreading the good word and everybody we will see you next week can you dig it dig it sucker sucker